This episode of the podcast is supported by Bentley Lewis, an award-winning executive search firm. Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. We are proud to be official media partners of Dive In Festival this year, which is really cool. And we're doing a series of podcasts for the festival. And if you don't know, Dive In Festival is a global movement in the insurance sector, which is supporting the development of inclusive work place cultures so really really cool work they're in about 33 countries now so they do these really cool events panel discussions uh, all over the world really helping to promote diversity and inclusion which is very cool i hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy awesome and we're live folks thank you very much for tuning in um Today, I'm, it's a pleasure actually to be joined by Mark McKenna-Coles. Uh, he's a Global Diversity and Inclusion Manager at Lloyds of London, and he's leading on the Dive In Fest, which we're going to hear all about. And we're doing a series of three podcasts for the event, which we did last year, which were awesome. Um, I think this year it's all virtual, but again, we'll hear a bit about, a bit about that from Mark. But Mark, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Uh, it's lovely to be here. So. Pleasure. How have, you, how have you found the last few months? Um, it's been interesting. Um, um, you know, working working remotely is uh, has its challenges, but it also has its um, opportunities as well. Um, I live in Brighton, so travelling into central London is always a task in itself. You know, I'm not going to yeah. moan about Thameslink or Southern, but we all know <laughs> what's happened in the past with them. Um, but you know, for me, it has meant that I I am able to not you know having to travel so far. Um, yeah. But it's also getting used to to working remotely for such a long period of time. I was very blessed that in November last year, myself and my husband moved to a much bigger house. So it we means that I do have an office. Um, so I am quite blessed um, in that aspect. But I do know through colleagues and friends and other people that we're, not everyone's so lucky. Um, yeah. And everyone has had to adapt in different ways. But for me, I think, you know, it uh, is a matter you, of Had adapting. you worked from home before? Um, maybe once a week, if right. that. Um, okay, so it's I, quite new for you then still to... Yeah, all the v- locations I've ever lived in have never really been the most comfortable to work from home. Right. I was been lucky that we've moved to a place where I do, I'm blessed to do that now. Um, yes. So I'm a massive advocate of working from home, but previously I personally just didn't always enjoy it. But also with the DNI role that I have, networking is very key, especially external networking. Um, and but luckily this year, external networking is is all done either virtually or hasn't happened. Yeah. But I know through conversations that I've had go forward, it will become a more blended approach, which means that my working from home ability will be more successful than it probably would have been in the past. Yeah. How have you found all the Zoom calls? I mean, I yeah. don't know about you, but I've, they've kind of got quite tiring a little bit. You know, like you feel you feel drained afterwards. It's 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 a weird one. How have you how did you how have you found it? Yeah, it's because the screen it's working with screens. You could get the best screens in the world, but the burnout on your eyes is is exhausting. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we were all getting used to Zoom or Teams or any other sort of facility towards the beginning. We're now, I mean, at Lloyd's, we are we've invested a lot in Teams actually as one okay. of the big areas. Um, and actually we were always looking to do that, but during the last four months, their work on it has ex- accelerated beyond their wildest dreams, which has been phenomenal. Nice. So we're all having fun by changing our backgrounds, which is what we yes. would do either on Zoom. Um, I haven't changed mine today. This background. is my genuine background. Nice. <laughs> my genuine background behind me. Um, so I'm not going to superimpose, or if I pick up a glass, it'll disappear. Um, but um, but yeah, no. I mean, I think I think yeah, it does cause that uh, slight sort of burnout. So one of the good things we've done at our organization and actually I'm a massive advocate of is 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 taking maybe an hour or so in the day where you walk away from the screen. That's not just a lunch break, that is maybe go and do some work in a slightly different way. Um, and it means that you're not constantly having to just be staring at a screen all the time, which can cause, you know, major burnout. Yeah, no, definitely. I've, I've, I love the telephone call. You know, almost I find the telephone call a little bit more intimate because yeah. it's like you're in, you know, they're in your ear. You kind of maybe are more used to the patter because, you know, sometimes on the Zoom, like the Internet's slightly off and you're like interrupting yeah. each other and you can't quite get the, the feel. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to mix it up. Um, and that's why I love walking around when I talk. Yeah. And when I'm on the video, I'm like, I've got to sit here. 
and yeah. I'm like getting fidgety and it's gone on for an hour and I'm like really I really want to so I've been trying to mix it up that way and my other my other super cool thing is I love I love standing desks because my back hurts when I sit for I'm two. very proud I have one in my house so I have oh, a thing nice. on my desk that allows me just... to lift it up which has been I mean this was given to me by work because uh, I had one at my in my office uh, at, well, at the office I didn't have an office but you know I was in an open plan um, and I and they said that if anyone had that and they require it because obviously after lunch during the day it's nice, it's nice to, stand. to have stand up yeah. so yeah yeah well if you don't if you're not lucky enough to have one my my number one trick is the ironing board the yes ironing board is the best standing desk ever because you can like sit and you can move it up and you can stand and it's a great height so yeah, I'd recommend this. And you can multitask, so you can do a and show as well as a Zoom call. <laughs> absolutely. It's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. I absolutely love it. Do you think do you think now that you're gonna work more from home? Or have you learned that actually for yourself, you know, you prefer you know going into an office environment? So for me it's it's uh, so we we bought in at Lloyd's. So this uh, the, we bought in at Lloyd's just over a year ago. This work for your diary. So this was you know you make the decision on how you want to work based on your diary and your commitments. So for me, I think I'm going to utilise that a lot more. So it might mean right. that some weeks I travel in maybe twice a week into London in the future. Other weeks I might go in three times a week. But it will depend on that. But I think this is now emphasize policies like that in organizations to say yeah you were saying work for your diary but do you know what the you know people were saying oh you need to be in you need to be in now we've all experienced this remote working those sort of policies can be enacted far greater and i think people will embrace them a lot more yeah and you, and you don't think they'll be it will be frowned upon where if someone wants to work four days from home or three days you think is it going to be uh, is everyone really accepting now that everyone has a choice i think people need to review their job and understand actually is you know and 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 other circumstances so it might be there might be and i think people are becoming more um switched on by personal circumstances because everyone's had to deal with certain personal circumstances in the last four months so whereby people were nervous to talk about child responsibilities in the past yeah. i think we're less nervous to talk about that so yeah. i think you know if you've got some of those justifications if you've got that reality and i think you know when we're having meetings now we've all been forced into having meetings online you know, yeah. we've all had to do it because we're all in the same situation. When we start doing a more blended approach, we need to start recognizing that, that when you set a meeting up, you need to recognize that that meeting needs to be booked for a meeting room and also online. You've yeah. got to do both. Yes. You definitely. can never do one because one person, it may just be one person, might be working in a different location from your meeting room on that particular day. Definitely. I think we also have to be mindful. A lot of a lot of people I speak to are quite nervous that, you know, what happens if I'm working from home four or five days a week, my colleague works next to my boss in the office five days a week and a promotion opportunity comes up, you know, and, and it's yeah. interesting because we all we're human. We're all biased. And, you know, if you're the manager and you really, really like this person next to you, but the person who works from home is much better and produces better quality work. There really needs to be some some thought around, you know, really well thought out appraisal process and and so forth. So some interesting topics to think about in this. Yeah, and I think it's in, that that uh, homes in on that inclusive leadership. If we've got leaders, managers, uh, etc., people that line manage are more inclusive in their approach, in their mindset. I think a lot of that thought will be very historic and we will now move on to that you know what we're we're recognizing people based on what they're producing what other qualities they have rather than oh well they're always in the office we're always having a chin wag or we're yeah. down at the land in um leaden hall market having a good old chat um <laughs> you know what um let's let's move past that let's yeah. you know we need to move on and i think it will come with time i think this yeah. has been the the, the 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 charge forward to help with that but i think there will be it will take probably a few more years before we're in a really good way of working uh to that extreme but it, time time will tell and i think we won't go backwards we will go forwards yes no definitely this was this was coming anyway 
right? It was interesting. I was doing I was doing talks on work from home and flexible working and all of that stuff. And I just feel, feel like if the pandemic had it happened, all of this stuff we're talking about is probably 10 or 20 years in the future. Yeah. And, and this has just really given it a good shot in the arm. Yeah. And something suddenly, dreadful has created something, uh, a momentum of positivity. Yeah, yeah. And so no, I think it's great. I'm, I'm super excited for what's to come. But, I, you know, I, I think there are still, you know, some interesting things and challenges to work through. And from, I guess, also from an inclusion perspective, um, what have you found that's really challenging during this period? Um, I think I think it is um, sometimes the connectivity, but then yeah. I think on the other side of it, I've learned more about some of my work colleagues than I would ever done because you're invited into their home. Yes. Yeah. So I think you know there there are always challenges when it comes to that 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 sort of uh, or. or ad hoc contact that you might want some of the conversations um but i also think that there's actually been a larger movement on certain topics around inclusion that have really sort of uh, been heightened during this so for example well-being uh, mental health you know mental health you know when we talk about that some people get you know, are really excited because it's something they're passionate about and others get really nervous, you know, oh, I don't want to talk about mental health. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't have issues. OK, yes. do you know what? Every person in this world, irrespective of who they are, including Trump, yes. um, <laughs> has mental health issues. OK, be it the fact that you might get stressed every so often. And actually, that is a um a a symbol or a signal of mental health issues it doesn't mean that you are constantly having mental health issues but you will have some form of mental health issue and i think all of these sort of things and the conversations that so we ran a series of events during mental health awareness week yeah. and all of it was virtual we even ran covid session um not covid covid well no <laughs> yoga oh. all right <laughs> Sorry, my Siri just went off. Um, I don't know why I mentioned COVID and Siri went off. Um, that was a bit surreal. Um, no, we did yoga sessions and we had nearly 300 people from across the market over those sessions turn up for yoga. Amazing. And you think, you know, and there was a mix of genders on there. You know, you know, no one really could see each other. It was very sort of, but, but it meant that people wanted to embrace that. Yes. Um, and these because are people that just probably would never have done something like that in the past. Yeah, because we're human and we want human contact. And mm. as much as it's nice to work from home and stuff, I think people need a blend and that, and that needs to be appreciated. The other thing I've really had to learn is that everyone's gone through a different experience. You know, yep. as, you, as you mentioned, everyone has different mental health needs and issues and stuff. And I think it's just appreciating that, you know, someone might be living on their own, you know, in a small apartment somewhere, and just you know they really need to get out and and, and see people yep. and others you know two kids my scenario my wife has been working in intensive care my kids have been at school right. like it's just you know everyone's different and and i'm i've really had to just appreciate that and and i found it yep. quite challenging as well you know leading a team you're doing the zoom calls some people have their cameras on some people don't want to have their cameras on someone people they put a smile on when they come for the you know the daily call and just trying to find out how people are feeling and giving them yeah. the chance to say like, hey, actually, you know, I don't feel like coming on the call today or I need a bit of help or just give me some time. That's been a real learning experience for me. Yeah, and I'm blessed that I have my husband. He he does work. Uh, so when he comes home, obviously, I see him and stuff. He did make a joke this morning because he said, oh, you know, when you think about going back to the office in the future, he said, you know, you do realize the majority of contact that you physically had in this house has been with the two dogs because they sit in the office with me. And I said, my worry is I'll go back into the office and I'll start offering uh, treats out to my colleagues because that's basically what I do here. So I need to get into the mindset that I shouldn't do that with humans. I shouldn't be offering out dog biscuits, uh, but you never know. You never know. I'll, I'll take a cookie or something. I mean, yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Has your has your approach to DNI changed then during the pandemic? Like, yeah, I think you well, it has the way we 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 present it has had to change. Yeah. Um and I think that's been a real positive uplift. I think we've had to really think about um 
the very sort of different nuances to that. I mean, we always have a plan at the beginning of the year, um, you know, and, and, and a lot of those plans have been thrown out the window. But, you know, yeah. if I say in the last four months, you know, well-being and mental health has been a big thing. Also, yeah. um, in, in the last month and a half, I'd say, you know, the conversation around uh, race and ethnicity has really heightened. It's been something that's been on my radar and on my work uh, pattern, you know, doing. I've been doing work on it, but we've had to sort of accelerate elements of what we're trying to do. And I think that's positive as well, you know, the, you know, uh, positive that we are moving the momentum forward on that. Um, and, and, and there is more to come in that aspect. Um, and, and for me, that's been a map because it, we've had to accelerate. There's things that I'm not completely, and I always have to hold my hands up. A DNI manager doesn't know everything. We don't know everything about you know everything. So we have to educate ourselves constantly on a daily basis. So for me, I've had to sit here and educate myself around some of the elements of race and racial inequality and things like that. You know, and 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 realize where I should be continuously standing up, but where I need to move that momentum forward even further as well. So yeah. I think, yeah, there's been certain aspects that have changed um, and really accelerated as well. Yeah, How, what's another, an interesting one is onboarding. You know, we've, we've had a lot of, of people start new jobs virtually. They've never met anyone. Mm. You know, what's the culture like? How do you even get across what your culture's like when, someone's only seen someone on video or maybe five people as part of an interview yeah. process. You know, I think, I think that's very interesting. Like yeah. making people feel included virtually is it's tough. You know, I think people, are it is, it is around. tough. It is tough, but I think it's how teams treat each other. So I know um, the team that I mean, other teams with across Lloyd's, we do maybe two or three check-ins a week, some short, yeah. some larger check-ins. On a Friday specifically, we have this, what we call high five, where we all get together. Um, it's after five o'clock, obviously. Um, we always um, may, we may, not always, but we may have a drink with us because it is after five o'clock. Um, yeah. It means that we have this sort of half an hour or so of socializing, having that sort of wind down. Don't talk about work, just talk about other things, what you're doing at the weekend. So I think there is these elements of connection. And I know many other teams in the Lloyds uh, Corporation are doing exactly the same. And many yeah. teams across the Lloyds market are also doing that as well. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's obviously the quizzes, the virtual drinks. Yeah. So there's a lot yeah. of things companies are doing. What we haven't heard a huge amount is what can you do as a, what can you do to make your colleagues feel included? You know, like everyone attends these things organized by the companies. But is there anything, you know, what like a colleague can do? If you, if you know one of your team are feeling a little bit down or is there anything that you're seeing that's yeah. been that's, yeah, so it is a matter of just, um, you know, you might identify post, a, you know, during a meeting that someone's not as bright or whatever, um, or you haven't heard from them for a couple of days. And it is, it's, it, you know, don't be shy to reach out to them. Yes, they might be under pressure. Yes, but you know, the likelihood is, and I don't think I would see anyone that would decline this, their likelihood is they'll want to talk to you. Yeah. They're just, they're probably either too nervous to reach out themselves or they don't know who to reach out to. Uh, but for someone to reach out to them is much more powerful. So I think, you know, for anyone out there, if you see people struggling, if you feel mm, there's something not quite there, it might just be something very, very minor. I had a colleague who it was something very minor um, and I and no one really picked up on it. I reached out to her and asked the question and actually found out it was something much larger than that. Wow. Um, and you always find out things uh, that you might not do. You know, not everyone yeah. is always forthcoming. There's always, you know, we're British, so we always put up this yeah. wall uh, or we don't talk about that. But you know what? I think think that that wall is starting to break down quite a yeah. lot now. And I think this this whole experience of of pandemic and other things has started to break down. People are also becoming more vocal in many different ways. So I think when it comes to their own health, they're starting to become more forthcoming as well. Definitely. No, I think everyone's everyone's opening up a lot. During this pandemic, people are talking about their feelings more. Even yeah. guys are talking about their feelings more. I know. You're crazy. We're eh? talking about our feelings. No. You know, like I speak to a friend and he's I'm like, how are you doing, mate? Usually it's like, yeah, cool, you. And now it's like, well, actually, or you know, I've gone through this. 
yeah. and it's really nice. Everyone's everyone's sharing. Um, interestingly, today um, like Boris has just announced the um, comments that his uh, obesity campaign or something like yep. that, which is yep. quite interesting. Not sure he's quite hit it on the mark yet, but again, we're talking we're talking about mental health a lot, uh, which is great. And I I really think one thing to come out of this is we need to be talking about physical health as well. Absolutely, you know, it's both linked and there's big links to your immune system and things like that. So. Huge. Yeah. And but it's interesting in the workplace, you know, you, you it's not really been OK to go up to someone and say, hey, you know, have you thought about becoming more physically healthy? You know, mental health. Yes. You know, how are you feeling and stuff? So I think I think over the next kind of year, that will be a really interesting one. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and I agree. I think I think what 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 this has led to. I mean, for me personally, I um, it doesn't look like I've been doing this but ever <laughs> since lockdown. Yeah. Four days a week, I go out for a run in the morning, and I do four miles. Nice. Uh, so basically, I run from my house all the way down to the seafront, across to Hove, back again, um, and it's around four miles. Uh, I. It doesn't look like that, that I've done that. Um, but, you know, I have done that. It, it does make me feel better before for the start of the day. I get home, you know, what I'm actually doing is roughly getting up maybe slightly later than normal, but around the normal time that I would get up if I was going into London. So actually my day is similar okay. during the week. Yeah, but what yeah. I've been able to do is now go out for this run. Yeah. Um, and And I think, you know, things like that will continue. So I think challenging people in the future might be oh i understood that you used to go out running how's the running still going <laughs> yeah because actually that's another way of saying you know what you probably wouldn't have said before but actually it's going to yeah. become more acceptable yes definitely i've gone i've gone like four or five days a week with my exercise i do i do crossfit which is an american oh, yeah. yeah yeah crossfit thing and and my my crossfit gym went online so it did zoom classes so me and my wife were able to do them together because because you we've got two wow. kids like one of us goes then the other one looks yep. like the kid. So we just turned on the Zoom. Uh, the gym kindly lent us some equipment and and we're just I'm feeling like super fit right now. Plus wow. plus like healthy eating like we were making we've been making really good quality food. Yeah, fruit, vegetables, fish, meat, stuff like that. Like we've gone. Because, you know, like in the city, when you're coming in, it's just everyone's got a birthday. Everyone brings in some cakes. Um, you know, you go for a lunch. It's, it's I quite hard. Greg. <laughs> you know, to Greg for a takeaway, sa you know, sandwich yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Or, or you have a client lunch and it's like quite heavy. Yeah. Um, depending on which company you work for, you might have yeah. a glass of wine or beer. Yeah. Or, yeah. or that's, that's, that's gone down a lot now. So... Yeah, I'm feeling more healthy and I'm, I just hope another thing that comes out of this is people thinking more about their own physical health because it helps you fight off these these diseases and, and yeah. stuff. Huge, you know, it's really hugely. important. Yeah, huge. Um, tell me a bit about Dive In. So you're you're leading the, the festival now. Yeah, so so previously, um, Pauline Miller, who's my boss, actually, um, this has been something that she's worked on uh, and kind of led on uh since 2015 and and at the end of at the end of last year's dive in Pauline sort of said to me look you've you've already been in situ so I've been with Lloyd's it will be two years in about a week's time actually so this was kind of my third dive in uh with Lloyd's and um she sort of said look this is your opportunity to now sort of take that forward not expecting that COVID-19 was going to be <laughs> thrown in there as a bit of a curveball but it's a learning experience so yeah, yeah. so myself um, and I have a colleague um, who also works for Lloyd Yulia um, so um, and she works as part of our events team within within Lloyd so we as one of our objectives so not our whole job one of our objectives for this year was to to sort of see through the diving festival now Lloyd's it's not a Lloyd's run as such um, um, event. It is run by uh, a number of organizations, volunteers. We've got thousands of volunteers globally that are pulling this together. But our role is to sort of oversee and coordinate that and make sure. And we've got 17 um, great global festival partners this year. We've also got a huge amount of um, media partners, being yourselves one of them as well, which is, you know, we're so thankful for that as well. Um, so, yeah, it's been, but the, the additional challenge this year was we knew 
probably early or early on this year, you know, after the lockdown started here in the UK and other locations that we weren't going to be able to deliver the festival even in September face to face. So we made the decision that we were going to take it uh, fully virtual. Awesome. So we've had we we are we are continuously working. We have some platforms that we are going to be using to deliver those. We have well, we we originally thought we would have around 90, 90 plus events. We wow. now have over over a hundred events being run globally. Amazing. We think now we're going to be we were in thirty two countries last year. We think it's either thirty six or thirty seven this year. So even COVID nineteen has not stopped the growth of dive in. You've been pushing it forward. Wow. And we are pushing it forward. Yeah. It also means being online. We have a wider, bigger audience. In yeah. the UK, the average audience size is around six hundred per event. You know, and in other locations, that's going to be a similar number as well. However, right. saying that we're delivering it totally virtually, we have got one, no, two locations that have asked whether they can do a blended approach. So they want to do right. their event face-to-face, uh, -face, but also stream it as well. Okay. Um, and so Hong Kong and Shanghai are actually the two locations that are looking at doing a the physical element as well. But other okay. than that, Every other location is delivering their events uh, virtually. Okay, and is it and is it is it still ticketed and uh, limited yeah. number of how's it so, going? So people can go online. People go yeah. online to to diveinfestival.com. Uh, they'll be able to register for for the events. Uh, they'll get their confirmation through um, already in the UK only because I've just been looking at UK numbers today. Fifty percent of the seat uh, the seat allocation for dive in in the uk has already gone and we only opened the uh, festival at midday yesterday so awesome. um in other looks but the beauty of this year is if you are in the uk and you decide oh i'm gonna have a peruse and see what's going on in the us you don't have to fly to the us this year you can just you know sign up for a us event as long as you're awake or you are able to attend that particular time you yeah. have the ability to join a US event. You have the ability to join an event in Australia. You have an ability to, uh, uh, you know, join events all around the globe as well. So rather than just be stuck in your own location, you have the ability to a much wider spectrum of conversation. Brilliant. Can you only watch them live? Or will there be some, could you watch there them will after be, the event? So, so some will be recorded uh, and okay. made available on the diving website. So we do have, sec so on the diving website at the moment, we have some videos of some events from previous years. We will be putting more events on, uh, we'll be recording more events this year and those will be made available. Not every event can be, this is due to, uh, some of the speakers and stuff like that. That's just, you know, different situations. But we'll try and put as many of those events on the diving website um, in the coming months post the uh, festival. Perfect. And what are the main themes this year? Well, what what isn't a theme really, I think is uh, kind of there. So there is a lot of conversation about what are organizations doing during and post COVID. I think, yeah. you know, why why shouldn't that be a topic of conversation? Yeah. Um, so mental health comes out into that, you know, is d &I still at the top of the agenda when it comes to organizations? So that that's kind of that area. Then we've got things such as uh, obviously well-being and mental health, which I've already explained, but things such as uh, racial equality, ethnicity, all around that, educating more people around, you know, some of the things that have been raised in recent months. You know, we know Black Lives Matter is not a new thing. You know, the hashtag Black Lives Matter has been around for a number of years. The campaign has been around for a number of years. Racism has been around for centuries. Um, and actually, we need to now be more educated, irrespective of your own ethnicity. We all need to be educated on all of that elements as well. I mean, perfect example, um, GMB this morning um, was uh, did a, a section because um, today uh, be um, Friday the 31st of July, and I know this will be shown at later date, but today um, Manchester and other locations up north are being locked down due to uh, you know yeah, heightened that. risk to COVID. Um, that has had a knock-on effect to Eid, and people right. and families celebrating Eid because they would normally come together. So they 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 did an explanation on GMB this morning saying that, you know, 
how would people feel if this was Christmas and this situation happened to people at Christmas? You know, people would feel upset that they couldn't go and see their family. This is the same situation. Well, they tweeted about that today, which I think was great. But the racism in the comments underneath really? that tweet, horrendous. I've even called it out. I've even commented on the tweet and said, the racism in this post is diabolical. It's, it's ridiculous. And this is people's lack of education, lack of understanding, lack of awareness. And, and, and people like myself, I don't speak on behalf of people from other ethnic minorities or other ethnic groups, but I speak beside, you know, I stand up when I see that racial inequality. It's the same as the work that I do in the trans space. I do, I, I, I'm a very massive advocate for trans and non-binary, the, the whole uh, move forward there. I don't speak on behalf of those people. I speak with the trans community. And, yeah. and, and that's because I've educated myself to do that. And that's the same as what needs to happen when it comes to racial. And that's exactly what we're trying to address during the diving festival as well, um, uh, uh, in amongst other topics such as gender, uh, uh, there's topics around sexual orientation, there is topics on uh, gender identity, um, and even just around how leadership and others can be more inclusive in their approaches when they're doing their work as well. Definitely. It's 2020. I can't believe racism and anti-Semitism with Wiley, certainly with Wiley's yep. tweets yep. last week. Uh, it still it still exists. It's crazy. Know. You know, and um, I think it's so important that we continue the conversation, continue the dialogue, you know, keep pointing this out, because until until it stops, we just need to keep talking about yep. it. And I know. need to. Uh, and we're doing an event on white privilege um, and we've called it out in the title white privilege. And I'm not ashamed to, I'm not ashamed to talk about white privilege. I know as a white man, I have those privileges. I know that as a gay man, I can have some of those privileges taken away because I am a gay man, but I can disguise that. I can disguise that element of myself where I need to. I hate doing it. I don't like doing it. I very rarely do it, but I have the ability to, to continue having that privilege. People from ethnic minorities cannot disguise that. And I think what we need to do as people with certain privileges or privileges that we have, we need to be fighting for and speaking up. And that is exactly what these events, dive in, other events that are taking place will hopefully uh, waken in people's minds as we go forward. Definitely. No, definitely. We need to keep the momentum up and not let it slip because the, the, the Black Lives Matter movement started. That It seemed to be a real, you know, the real conversation. And, and we don't want to let that, that start no. to fall away. You know, it yeah. needs to be talked about and things need to happen at all levels of the organization as well. So look, it sounds like you guys are doing some great stuff. I'm yeah. super looking forward to it. Um, how can, so what's the, can you just let everyone know where the, what the website address is and how they can find yeah, out the so it's, uh, and diveinfestival.com. Okay, perfect. And we'll put that in the show notes as well. Yeah, so please do. I will do. Um, and really look forward to meeting you face to face soon. Yep, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Once all this is over, and really good luck for the dive-in festival, and uh, and thank you so much for joining. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Pleasure.